Chapter 481, Kirihara's Past Glory Exhausted, Sakurai could finally enter lessons at night. She had been swinging her sword for the entire day. Her public image was one of amiability and generosity, which won her great respect. Now, despite her grudges against Lu Xu, she could not vent her negativity on others. Actually, she had expected a break after her morning sessions. But, to her astonishment, Kirihara Yusuk was nowhere to be found. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 199. Was it a scheme to distract her so that he could carry out some secret activities? A childish move indeed, but she could not do anything about it. Since she had promised to give it all she had, there was no way she would regret it now. There were few minds of great wisdom in the world, and Sakurai was ashamed of her falling for such a simple trick. Thus, Sakurai messaged her teacher once she got the chance, reporting on Kirihara Yusuke's disappearance. She hoped her mistake could be compensated by locating Kirihara with her teacher's help. In the worst-case scenario, Kirihara Yusuke would have to be wiped out should he be found to be in contact with the Jingoists. Although it would be tough to kill him in broad daylight, there was poison. As a matter of fact, driven by results, many Japanese practitioners had resorted to such hideous means. They used poison together with practices such as ambushes or assassination. Admittedly, practitioners were blessed with a high resistance against poison. But they would become an easy target once their powers were weakened. Truly, it would be almost impossible to locate Lushu in a big city like Nishinokyo with only the limited manpower of the conservatives, but a group of commoners served them too. That was very normal and standard practice for most big organizations, just like how Tanaguchi Bundai worked for the Heavenly Network. This was because some duties were better off not done personally by practitioners. The Heavenly Network was at the extreme end though and even jobs such as plumbers and toilet cleaners in the Lingjing Lane basement were filled by their own people. They had done it in the army anyway, so it was not something to be fussy about. What was the matter with cleaning up the place, if that was the task assigned? On the contrary, all practitioners, regardless of their level, in the Phoenix Society led an aristocratic life. They hired commoners to take care of their needs. The Phoenix Society hoped to develop a sense of honor and pride in metahumans through this. Therefore, a new service industry had emerged among the commoners. Some had an eye on its lucrativeness, while others wished to be recognized and practice cultivation with the pros. After all, legend said that many big organizations were interested in improving the efficiency of power awakening. Not long after, Oda received updates on Kirihara's whereabouts. Then, he said to Matsura Harekuro, go. He was spotted at the 6th street. Matsura's brains throbbed in pain at the order to monitor Lu Shu. But he had to obey. Okay. I'm going right away. Don't lose him again. Understood. From Matsura Harekuro's distress, plus 399. When Matsura arrived at the place following the clues given, he saw Lu Shu peeking furtively into a building by its door. Matsura was happy. Caught ya. Could it really be a secret meeting with the Jingoists? Complicated feelings bubbled up in Matsura's heart. After all, Kirihara was one of the people most wanted by the conservatives, for his family had a great influence in the circle due to their mysterious inherited trade. But if he had betrayed the conservatives, they had to kill him before any agreement was made between him and the jingoists. Nonetheless, it would be a great loss for the conservatives. Hiding in Lu Xu's blind spot, Matsura observed him closely. Suddenly, someone exited from the building and Matsura saw with his own eyes that Kirihara Yusuk stepped forward with a stack of unknown materials in his hands. Matsura's heart began pounding hard. Here he goes. However, in the next instant, he realized from the building walked out a group of students who had just finished their weekend tuition classes. And Lu Xu distributed to each of them a piece of white paper with Prince Baika Dojo. Sakurai Yeko's Sword Play We welcome you to join us for swordplay classes conducted by Sakurai Yeko herself. 
Extraordinary Sword Skills From Matsuura Harekuro's Distress, plus 666 Can you please stop being such a joker? You've come so far just to give out leaflets to tuition students? Then, Lu Xu asked those students a few questions before rushing to the next location with his leaflets. It was hard for him to find tuition classes by himself, but those students had a much better knowledge of that. Matsura Harekuro was dumbstruck. Apparently Lu Xu was planning to cover all the tuition classes in Nishinokyo. As a result, a second wave of students crowded into the dojo right after Sakurai finished her morning shift. Advertisements always worked, Lu Xu knew it. On the other side, Sakurai was close to desperate upon seeing even more students. What's going on? Then, she received a call from Mastura. Sakurai, Kirihara distributed leaflets to 17 tuition classes and students are still rushing to the dojo right now. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 999. Matsuura also could not explain Kirihara's peculiar behaviors. Why, as the owner of the dojo, are you out publicizing on your own? People have great expectations of you, be it to restore the Kirihara's influence and your family's past glory or to stay closely connected with the jingoists and the conservatives. Otherwise, you could also contact those hidden clans who used to be on your side. But it seemed that Kirihara Yusuke had abandoned the cultivation arena altogether and buried his head deep in the business realm. Chapter 482 A Murderous Night the Heavenly Network sent Lu Xu to cause trouble. And the conservatives believed that he would, judging from his drastic change of temperament. However, he seemed to be going in the wrong direction. At night, as Lu Xu was counting money in the backyard, Bun Dai opened her mouth as if to speak, but hesitated. Lu Xu smiled. Just say whatever you want to. It's fine. You are very focused when you make money. I'm going to prepare your meal. Then Bundai left. She was confused about her mission now. What happened to being an ace's assistant in wreaking political havoc? Now they were starting a business. Sakurai dragged her tired body over and said, Sensei, I shall go back first if there's nothing more for me to do. She was really exhausted today and in no mood to seduce Lu Xu anymore. Even for a practitioner, high-intensity teaching would be energy-draining, or rather, emotionally draining. Now, all she wanted was a good sleep. Smiling cheerfully, Lu Xu counted a few hundred thousand Japanese yen and passed it to Sakurai. This is yours. Sakurai froze for a second. Sensei, there is no need for this. Really? She had access to a large fortune in the conservatives and a measly few hundred thousand was only enough for several meals. But Lu Xu insisted and stuffed the money in her hand. Take it. You earned it. Yes. Are you happy about making money for yourself? Puzzled, Sakurai shot another look at Lu Xu, wondering about the hidden meaning behind his words. Lu Xu smiled and said, Now you may go. Have a good rest. At home, Sakurai lay on her pink bed. Although she still had to kneel on the floor beside her teacher, she preferred places such as beds, sofas or chairs that felt more comfortable and convenient. Having not changed her clothes, Sakurai stared absently at the money in her hand. Speaking of which, it was her first legitimate income. Despite a faint feeling of oddness, her conscience was more at ease. Then, Sakurai stood up and stuffed the money into a hidden chamber in the ceiling. She could not explain the urge to do so, as if there were certain meanings attached to it. Logically, she was rich enough to ignore that pathetic amount. As the night grew thicker, a black shadow swooshed out of the backyard of Baika Dojo. In full control of his muscles, Lu Xu walked on the rooftop without making a sound. Ten minutes later, Lu Xu paused to check his direction, and moved on again. Till another half an hour later, he had finally stopped behind the neon lights on the rooftop of a bar. The lights provided the perfect disguise for him. Lu Xu started to wait with his good patience, just like how he waited for the skeleton cavalry at the Beimang remains. 
At this moment, a deluxe car came to a stop outside the bar, and two young men alighted from the car. Lu Xu let out a sigh of relief. Target confirmed. One of them was Nojoa Takenabu's son, Nojoa Hakushun, another key member of the Jingoists. Honestly Lu Xu did not expect his appearance that night, though he knew the man frequented the place. Earlier in the afternoon, he investigated the area while giving out leaflets. Lu Xu was cautious. He would not take chances without enough familiarity with this big city. As a matter of fact, the collection of God's warrant for his arrest was issued by Nojoa Hakushun, according to the information given by Yu Mingyu. Lu Xu knew something that Bun Dai did not, including Nojoa Hakushun's habits. After all, Bun Dai did not know every Heavenly Network member hiding in the city or even inside the collection of gods. There was no way for the collection of gods to send spies into the Heavenly Network but not the other way round. During their age-long enmity, neither side would show any mercy towards the other. In Japan, pubs were a far cry from izakaya's one, which were simply another form of eatery. Usually, student part-timers were only allowed to work at izakayas, but not pubs. Undeniably, though, not all pubs were that messed up. Lu Xu decided not to follow his target into the pub, as many pubs in Nishinokyo, although open to the public, had many rules and often required bookings. This one, for instance, was almost a VIP club. Unspoken rules abounded in such places. Waiters might have already started observing you from the moment they passed you the first piece of towel. From your actions and expressions they could tell whether you were a first-timer or a customer of a specific type. Some items in the pubs should not be touched either. For instance, higher-class wines cannot be purchased in bottles. Thus, Lu Xu was not confident about his pretense as a native Japanese in this situation. Culture differed from country to country. Take for example phones in Japan were supposed to be in silent mode in public, but the sound had to be turned on for photo-taking. One could call the police if he or she had been photographed without permission. And Lu Xu could not be sure that he had complete knowledge of all the details of the local culture. In any case, those places were different from schools. In fact, he would not have been able to accustom to the school environment so easily decades ago. Thus, the best solution now was to continue stalking after the target was out. He should not risk exposing his own identity inside. Lu Xu waited patiently until 3 a.m., when Nojoa finally boarded the car and left. Not concerned about Nojoa's companion's whereabouts, Lu Xu changed his face into another jingoist practitioner's who shared a similar body shape as him. Then, he went on in pursuit of the car. A car could never outrun a practitioner. Without unnecessary turns, the car drove straight towards its destination, showing the full sense of security Nojoa had in Nishinokyo. He did not seem to think that anyone would dare to be in his way in Japan, not even the conservatives. Ten minutes later, the car picked up a young lady, and finally it came to a stop in front of a villa. In the darkness, Lu Xu stood still on the rooftop of the villa. He watched in silence as Nojoa walked into the villa with the woman in his arms. Another half an hour later, all the lights went off in the house. The windows were connected to the alarm system as fine metal wires were embedded in the glass. Any attempt to break the glass would trigger the alarm. He waited for 20 more minutes. In the end, he released a thin layer of divine water to corrode the rooftop. Everyone was fast asleep, and no one even noticed the existence of the man-sized hole in the rooftop. The faint golden glow was visible, but there were no eyes to see it. This was why Lu Xu had chosen to take action at 4 a.m. Lu Xu was not a man of generosity. He who wanted his life would pay with his own life. Chapter 483 Precise Machinery Impermeable silence shrouded the world before sunrise. Quietly Lu Xu lowered himself into the room underneath. His desire to kill Nojoa Hakushun had been there since the post on Darkness Kingdom and it took him great patience for this day to come. According to the information available, Nojoa was a Class C practitioner, which increased Lu Xu's confidence in taking him down. 
But he needed to be careful because the last thing Lu Xu wanted was for Nojua to escape and leak any unfavorable information about himself. Lu Xu had no interest in earning Nojua's distress points, as he would soon be able to receive those from the collection of gods as compensation. All he had to do was deal a fatal blow to Nojua. However, the silence was torn apart by a piercing swoosh just when Lu Xu was about to jump into the room. He had sensed the approach of a sharp blade. Holding onto the edge of the hole, Lu Xu immediately changed his direction and evaded the attack. The room was lit up at once. It was Nojua Hakushun's voice, with a tinge of surprise. It's you? Kitamura Hirono. That was the face Lu Xu was wearing at the moment. Without a word, he sprang towards Nojua. Underneath him the wooden floor instantly collapsed into pieces. In the not-so-spacious room, two shadows moved around at tremendous speed. Nojua Hakushun had always been on guard against his opponent's sword, which was the fastest among the class C's. Surprisingly, though, in the next instant two flying daggers shot out from Kutamura's hands. Despite Nojua's quick defense, he was unable to resist the attack from two flying daggers at the same time. Before he could utter a sound, Concealed Arrow had punctured his neck, reducing his voice to an indistinct groan. Lu Xu was ready to leave after robbing Nojua's long sword. He had no intention to kill that young lady, from whom Lu Xu detected no energy waves and deduced that she was only a commoner. Moreover, Nojua had mentioned the name Kitamura Hirono. Would it cause confusion in the collection of gods if the woman heard that name? Yet, he was also cautious about underestimating his rivals. How could Nojoa Hakushun have anticipated his move, which was supposedly too stealthy to be noticed? What went wrong? Thinking back, Lu Xu recalled a pause in Nojoa's motion right before he entered the villa earlier. Was it because of his reflection on the body of the car? Seriously? Even so, Nojoa had decided to be on the alert silently instead of startling the intruder. He might have been dead if not for his extraordinary powers that were way beyond Nojoa's. Indisputably, Lu Xu in his current state could defeat any class C's effortlessly in a one-to-one -one combat. Fifteen minutes after Lu Xu had left, more than twenty black cars roared towards the villa. A middle-aged man was the first to alight, followed by many younger ones, dressed in black suits and a collection of God's badge pinned in front of each chest. Soon, all key locations around the villa were occupied in an efficient and orderly manner, while a few others went to knock on the neighbors' doors for further inquiries. Everyone was clear on his or her own task. The entire group operated like a piece of machinery with all cogs fitting together perfectly. The door of the villa was wide open, into which the collection of God's members were guided in by a pale-looking young lady. Shivering in nervousness, she was making an explanation. Next to the middle-aged man stood a young man respectfully. The former asked the latter calmly, What do you think, Kitamura? Can't be sure as of now. Okay. Go take a look inside. They ascended to the second floor from the staircase, only to see Nojoa Hakushun lying in a pool of blood. The entire room had been blocked off and staff in white clothes, goggles and masks were gathering every useful clue. As if calculating something, Kitamura Hirono paced a few steps and then, suddenly, he threw a punch into the white wall, extracting a small black box to be passed to the middle-aged man. The man connected the box to a phone in his pocket with a cable. Then, Nojoa Hakushun's confused voice in his last minutes was heard by everyone in the room. It's you? Kitamura Hirono. The line seemed to be the greatest clue casting aside the fighting sounds that ensued after. However, it had already been mentioned by the woman just now. The middle-aged man was expressionless. An outsider's doings. Kitamura seemed totally unconcerned, though he was the only suspect pinpointed at the moment. He analyzed the situation with composure. If it was one of us, he would have known that every room is installed with this equipment and he would have destroyed it altogether. Besides, not a clever trick to purposely leave behind clues. 
Indeed, if it were really Kitamura, he could have killed the woman and taken the box with him. Then, he would be free from suspicion even if others found out that it was done by their own people because the pool of suspects would be too big. The middle-aged man looked up at the hole, whose edges were smooth like a mirror. However, he did not associate it with the divine water. Rather, he was misled into another direction, the earth type. In Pattaya, an earth-type metahuman once helped Li Xiao in killing the materialization-type expert Johnson. And the unknown person's level was suspected to be Class B. This gave the middle-aged man an ill hunch. To them, expansion was a necessary cause, but the current heavenly network was too powerful an opponent to be messed with. They were no longer the sleeping lions, as they were decades ago. Now, even the collection of gods felt helpless sometimes. But there was no turning back. The collection of gods would be suffocated by the shortage of resources if they did not venture out. Many elites chose to support the jingoists because they knew there were no better alternatives. Of course, there were a number of extremists agitating for a radical idea like, let Japan merge with China and become an autonomous province. They believed it was the shortcut to economic growth in the context of increasing volcanic and tectonic activities. Clearly, though, the collection of gods did not agree. The middle-aged man said, still emotionless. Everyone on first ground alert. The heavenly network is here. Chapter 484, Sakurai Yeko's Sword Play Teacher Once Lu Xu entered the dojo, he saw Bundai waiting in the yard. Earlier, he had ordered her to retreat immediately if he had not returned by sunrise. Bundai made a deep bow to Lu Xu. Welcome back. Did everything go well? Yes. I killed Nojoa Hakashun. But I'm not sure whether it can be planted on Kitamura Hirono. However, we should be safe. In any case, Kirihara Yusuke's enemies should be the Jingoists and there was nothing to do with Nojoa Hakashun. Lu Xu received 1,000 distress points in Nojoa's dying moments and a great deal from the collection of God's superiors. Following his death, checking the names of the entries, he was relieved to know that the name list was almost identical to the one registered after the end of the Beimang remains. Mystery solved. In other words, those names belonged to the collection of God's superiors, and last time it was related to the relic and their missing class C spy. Now, the illumination of the third layer of his celestial map was almost complete. Lu Xu's mind was at total peace. He did not like to owe anybody anything. Thus, when the breakfast vendor Uncle Li and others were kind to Lu Xu, he often allowed them to try some of his stinky tofu for free when he sold it. Certainly a piece of stinky tofu would not mean much to them, but Lu Xu would feel uneasy had he not done so. The more coldness one has experienced in the world, the more he will cherish the warmth around him now. Thus, Lu Xu did not take the heavenly network's care and kindness for granted either. As the saying goes, sow nothing, reap nothing. Be it at the Beimang remains or the Salt Lake remains, he had not spared a single spy's life. Of course, it was his duty too. He did it out of responsibility and also as an act of reciprocation. Lu Xu had never forgotten the importance of repaying other people's goodwill, even though he had experienced the full taste of darkness, indifference and heartlessness of the world. This time, he had accepted the mission, knowing all too well that he was the most suitable candidate for Kirihara Yusuke's replacement. Nya Ting gave him the divine water for free. And the heavenly network had decided to give him deep sea white sand as well despite their ignorance of Lu Xiaoyu's control of an earth-type metahuman's spirit. It was all because of the same reason that Nye Ting saw Lu Xu as deserving of it. On the other hand, they could have confiscated both thinking that they would not be useful for Lu Xu. Hence, Lu Xu was determined to make some contribution this time. Although he was upset about the inheritance scam and he had overthrown his supposed persona, he did not think it was a big issue at all. But it would have been just wonderful if the heavenly network had fulfilled its promise on the inheritance. Then a thought crossed Lu Xu's mind. Could he ignite his entire third layer nebula using distress points from the collection of gods if he began a killing spree? 
easy peasy. Most of the remaining collection of God's forces were jingoists, who well deserved to die. Following this vein, he might have to rely on the collection of gods for his future promotion. The thought dragged him out of his bed and into the yard for sword practice, until the full dawn of the day. At the moment, the news on Nojua Hakushin's death spread out, and conservative members like Sukurai Yeko and Oda Takuma were the first group of outsiders to learn about it. No one had any clues on the murderer's identity. According to the insider information of the collection of gods, the heavenly network was the only suspect and no attempts were made to create an illusion of an internal conflict. Oda's face was expressionless upon hearing the news. He agreed on the involvement of the heavenly network. Yet. Where were they? Why was there no trace at all? In fact, Oda did hope for the interference of an external force to disrupt the jingoists' complete dominance. But it certainly had better not be the Heavenly Network, a non-native force. In the meantime, Nya Ting was reading the update in the Luhai Lane. His fingers tapped rapidly on the stone table, and his face remained expressionless throughout. Sher Shuajin shot him a curious look and asked, Why so happy? Nya Ting showed him the news, and the latter was stunned at once. So fast? It's only been a few days. This kid is certainly not very forgiving. You need to watch out. No worries. I'm waiting for his safe return so that he can seek revenge from me, replied Nia Ting lightheartedly. The key thing was, the information in their hands was not from Tanaguchi Bundai, who had yet to file any report. But when Nia Ting and Sher Shuajin learned about Nojoa Hakushin's death, they instantly arrived at the conclusion that it was definitely Lu Xu's doings. In the morning, Lu Xu walked to school as usual. The streets were clean as always and nothing seemed to have changed since Nojoa Hakushin's death. Kirihara Yusuk was free from any suspicion too. But once he entered the campus of Baika High School, he sensed strange stares all around. Indeed, he was a different person from the Kirihara Yusuk in the past, and in this case it was only shown in their attire style. The old Kirihara used to be properly dressed and would even button up the top button of his uniform shirt. But Lu Xu did not button it. Lu Xu decided not to waste too much time on trivialities like this. Suddenly he pulled a boy up with his collar and asked, Why are you staring? From Pseudo Keiji's distress, plus 199. Caught off guard, Pseudo replied nervously, People are saying that you are Sakurai Yeko's sword play teacher. Oh, Lu Xu nodded. So that was the after effect of making so much money. Never mind the trouble, so long as he had enough money to make. Lu Xu let Pseudo go. Those students around were dumbfounded. Based on his strength, there was no doubt that he was a well trained swordsman. But why had he remained silent in the past despite being a victim of bullies? However, what was happening now seemed completely justifiable given his parents' sudden death and the title as Sakurai Yeko's sword play teacher. When Lu Xu walked into his classroom, the seven students who were beaten up by him instantly went quiet. As he walked past Noguchi Yuki, the latter lowered his head diffidently. Lu Xu knocked on his table and demanded, Did you tell your family to put less salt? From Noguchi Yuki's distress, plus 555. How did it feel when the boy who used to be bullied suddenly became the head of the gang? Chapter 485, A Race Between the Experts Actually, school bullying was a very serious matter in Japan and had received vast media coverage. In recent years, repeated cases had been reported on victims of bullying throwing themselves in front of trains in an attempt to end their lives of humiliation. Undoubtedly, though, this could partially be attributed to their students' fragile mental resilience. Many Chinese students studying in Japan had realized that the education system there was not as good as expected, as it failed to groom their students into psychologically strong individuals. Yet, one must acknowledge that mentally weak people exist in all societies. And just like other countries, Japan has both the beautiful side and the ugly. Some girls even preferred gangster-looking boys because they were deemed to be more manly. 
thinking that Kirihara Yusuk's bento used to be robbed every day. Lu Shu loathed that people of Noguchi Yuki's kind did not even suffer from any guilty conscience. At this moment, a girl with a sense of righteousness suddenly stood up and confronted Lu Shu. Kiriharakin, you must hate how others used to bully you. But please, tell me the difference between the current version of you and sorts like Noguchi Yuki. Can you answer me? The difference? Lu Shu gave it a serious thought and answered, the difference is I'm stronger than them. From Noguchi Yuki's distress, plus 666. From. Ouch. What a painful truth. Lu Shu was amused too. Why didn't you stand up earlier when Kirihara Yusuk was bullied in the past? Why? Do you think it's easier to bargain with me? Then, he slowly paced over to a window seat in the last row. Lu Shu looked at one of the seven boys and asked, Can we change seats? Quietly the boy carried his bag and went to Lu Shu's original seat. No one dared to raise any objection and they could only stare as the familiar yet alien Kirihara Yusuk transformed into a newborn bully. But that by no means meant that Lu Shu was everyone's enemy because other victims of bullying felt that their justice had been rightfully upheld. At the moment, Lu Shu was surrounded by many layers of aura, the most prominent of which was his role as Sakurai Yeko's swordplay teacher. All of a sudden, he had become an existence close to a high school celebrity. During morning recess, some girls came over to Lu Shu's seat, hoping to clarify the myth whether he was really Sakurai Yeko's teacher. Even a few girls from other classes came to their class and asked to be introduced to whoever Kirihara Yusuk was. Not everybody knew how he looked like anyway. Nevertheless, Kirihara had been sleeping all along, as if determined not to listen to any lessons. That was astonishingly unexpected. Despite his cowardly personality, Kirihara's academic results were reasonably good. Hence, there was nothing wrong with Yumingyu's words that Lu Xu only had to act like himself. Finally, Lu Xu woke up before the start of the last lesson. A girl appeared outside their classroom door, surrounded by quite a few girls, chuckling beside. Then, Lu Xu heard someone in his class murmuring, Isn't that the girl Kirihara confessed to in grade 10? Lu Xu was shocked. I didn't know there's such a thing. Come on, it's grade 12 now. Back then, it was quite a hit in the school, because the girl had actually posted Kirihara's confession letter on the school notice board. The incident also contributed to Kirihara's low self-esteem. Kirihara, someone's waiting for you outside, a classmate called him. Chiba gave Lu Shu a concerned look. Having been his classmate for so many years, she knew full well just how hurt Kirihara was by that episode. Even in grade 12 some people still jeered at him for that. Frowning, Lu Shu walked out, wondering what the girl was doing here. He asked her, yes? The girl smiled and said, I was wrong back in grade 10, because I did not know you well enough. Recently my friends have been telling me that you are a good person, so I'm hoping to get to know you again. Now, I want to give you one more chance to introduce yourself. What's so good about you? Lu Xu drew a startled breath. Wasn't it the usual question he liked to ask others? How should he answer his own question? She must be an expert to anticipate her enemy this way. The key strategy to defeat a strong opponent was to make a quick and fatal move. Lu Xu pondered for a few seconds and replied, I'm good without you. From Shirakawa Yuna's distress, plus 666. He won. Lu Xu let out a sigh of relief, yet looking serious. My apologies. From Shirakawa Yuna's distress, plus 666. Under people's astounded stares, Lu Xu returned to his seat. Supporting his chin on his hands, Lu Xu gazed outside the window. His high school life had never been so carefree. In those days, he was desperate to finish his studies in school so that he could have more time with Lu Xiaoyu or to help with her work. How could he have the time to admire the school scenery outside? It felt as if it was a compensation for his lost youth. No one knew he was from the Heavenly Network, and no one knew he had just ended a man's life the night before. 
Nonetheless, what a view, seeing so many girls in white t-shirt and shorts on the field attending PE lessons. The girl called Shirakawa Yuna was still in shock outside their classroom. In the past few years, any mentions about Kirahara Yusuk often came together with her name, and her wise decision in rejecting him. It seemed that people were still living in the old days of Kurihara's feelings for her, and her sense of superiority. Maybe the real Kirihara would be happy to see this day coming. But, unfortunately, Lu Shu was not Kirihara Yusuk, and he had someone at home awaiting his safe return. Just when the bell rang for the last lesson, the teacher led someone into the classroom. Immediately, all movements in the class stopped as they stared in astonishment. Sakurai Yeko. Why is she here? Standing on the podium, the teacher introduced her to the class. Let me introduce a new transfer student to our class. I believe she is no stranger to you all. Sakurai Yeko from Shioj Girls High School. Lu Shu was shocked. Did it really have to be like this? After the self-introduction, Sakurai walked towards Lu Shu casually. Then, with a smile, she asked the student sitting on Lu Shu's right, Hi. Can I sit here? I mean, could you let me take your seat? The boy immediately packed his bag and moved to an empty seat in the last row. Everyone in the class held their breath, not hoping to miss anything in a blink. Following the news that Kirihara was Sakurai's teacher, people were very interested in their relationship. Now, however, the answer was right in front of their eyes. She had even transferred over for him. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens